I come from a Jewish tradition, the same one as Bernie Madoff, the worst financial criminal in history. So perhaps all Jewish transactions, including mine, need to undergo some extra scrutiny. My Catholic wife seems okay, but we all know about the horrors of priests and pedophilia. So maybe all Catholics, including Patty, needs to undergo some psychological testing. Now, my Italian relatives, we know they must be tied into the mafia. We've all seen The Godfathers, The Sopranos. So we really need to be keeping an eye on them. Them, the most dangerous four-letter word in the English language. This word is used to isolate, to marginalize, to insult. This word has been responsible for the suffering and death of millions, millions of people. Them is an obscene word. I'm an entrepreneur, passionate photographer, and have spent much of the last 12 years traveling in conflict regions, places like North Korea, Syria, Iran, getting people to communicate who otherwise would do anything to avoid each other. Working in confidential small groups with hundreds of top business and government leaders, trying to break down stereotypes, attack this four-letter word, I've learned that themification, a new word now, themification, <laughs> is often the root of the problems we deal with, both personally and geopolitically. We all know examples of the horrors that arise from demification, just a few of them. The Nazi Holocaust, Rwanda, Darfur, Cambodia, the killing fields, the Balkans, Syria today. And it's not just what they do to them, distant, far away. In America, we annihilated Native Americans as our manifest destiny. In turn, Japanese Americans, and today, randomly stop and frisk blacks and profile Arabs and Muslims. Now, we all agree security is absolutely essential. No question about that. But unfortunately, it's also sometimes used to rationalize some of these behaviors. And while we're getting better, we still look at someone who seems different and instantly label as them. So why do we do this? Why do we see others through this lens of them? Historically, them helped to differentiate families, tribes, for protection, bonding, to secure scarce resources. Today, though, we continue to use them to identify with our group, excluding others. But why? An important reason is that the world is overwhelming, full of confusing, complicated information. So to simplify this complexity and to reduce and protect us from ambiguity, which is a very uncomfortable feeling. We label, categorize, and stereotype. It's also efficient to label as them. But when we do that, we lose much of our ability to reason, to feel, and to empathize. We also, at that point, begin to only seek, see, and hear what we want and expect to find. And that's what psychologists call confirmation bias. Now, it doesn't help that the media, which we love to blame, but really just is a magnifying glass and mirror for our own biases, reinforces themification. How often do we hear the words Islamist, Muslim, terrorist, Arab, suicide bomber, Al-Qaeda, used as synonyms? This creates fear and a powerful, filter through which we are taught to see the world. Fear is created by them. Fear is often false expectations appearing real. We're hardwired. When the amygdala in our brain senses danger, it's designed to protect us. It immediately hijacks our prefrontal cortex, or our intellect, our limbic thinking, our emotional brain. We go into fight or flight survival mode. This comes at a huge cost. We sacrifice our openness, our willingness to hear, see others, our liberties. We sacrifice our humanities every time we allow this automatic themification filter to operate. 
It's time to eliminate the use and mindset of them. But it takes sustained, conscious effort to get past them. And it takes courage. We all want to believe we're good. And admitting, even to ourselves, that we stereotype and exclude others is painful. But it is possible. And one of the most powerful ways, which I've seen work hundreds of times, is through individual stories. When we really learn someone's story, they become more than a stereotype, a living, real, nuanced human being. An exercise I've led many times over the past decade, in the other shoes, has each side retelling in the first person the story they've just heard from the other a real-life role-play, stepping into their shoes. Try to imagine a Palestinian becomes an Israeli and says, I come out of the cafe in Tel Aviv and hear a loud explosion. I see my brother-in-law's blood and body parts all over the street. Another Palestinian attack. And then the Israeli mirrors back what he's heard from the Palestinian. In the middle of the night, the soldiers storm in to occupy our home. They're screaming at us, humiliating me in front of my family. We're terrified, locked in a small room, and we've done nothing wrong. In the other shoes really works. And the reason it works is because once we learn someone's story, once we understand how they see their truth, their reality, we don't have to accept that as our truth. But just by hearing their story, we're changed. So getting rid of past them, obviously, is critical at a global and national level. But it's also really in our enlightened self-interest. We can improve all of our relationships, including our personal relationships, by getting past them. We manage to turn our spouses and partners into them. Has anyone here ever called their spouse or partner gone into this mode of, he always, she never. We just created them. So just imagine how much better our most important relationships would be free of themification. Mark Twain said, travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness, which is why I go to places we think we know everything about and are often wrong. But we don't have to get on a plane to travel. We can travel every day in our communities schools, offices, make an effort to really get to know people, get to know those around us. We can go from them to us. Can we interact with one new person a day? Maybe someone behind us in the supermarket, with us in the elevator, the barista at Starbucks, maybe the homeless person on the street. By doing that, are we able to get to a place where when we see someone who seems different, maybe wearing a sari, a headscarf, a kippah, a cross, a hoodie, we stop, we talk to that person, find out who they really are as fellow individuals, learn about their life, their family, beyond that apparent difference. This is also critical when we travel overseas. Some friends here in Boston chastised me for spending time with terrorists when they saw this at a photo exhibition of my work from the Middle East. Well, Abdul Salam is a Bedouin entrepreneur who welcomed my family into his home. His name actually means servant of peace, yet he was labeled by some a terrorist, a criminal, a them, simply because he's wearing an Arab headdress. We can get past them with four simple steps. I call them the four C's. First, we've got to be conscious, be aware of that stereotypical phrase, they always. We can only change something once we're aware of it. Second, be curious. Let curiosity replace our biases, our judgments. What's it really like in their shoes? Third, be compassionate toward ourselves, toward others. Brain research shows that we're much happier and more open when we're compassionate. And finally, challenge everything we see, believe, and are told. Challenge media reports about them. Challenge everything we've always known about them. Fight the urge to just support and defend our positions. 
and when we catch others themifying, challenge. The four C's really work, and I've seen this many, many times. For years, India and Pakistan had no diplomatic relations and risked nuclear war. I helped catalyze a group of 133 top Indian business leaders who walked across the Vaga border to meet with their Pakistani counterparts. The Indians were expecting to step into a terrorist hellhole, the ultimate them, but with ample security. After we spent three days together, all the participants became conscious of their stereotypes, curious about the other's narrative, compassionate, and challenged their preconceived notions. This allowed them to really see their similarities, that the Indians and Pakistanis look the same, have a shared cultural heritage, and are one people. Them had been overcome. The four C's also work on a personal level. I try very hard to be aware of and get past my them prejudices, and it's not easy. Three years I was in Syria with my family. We're walking and hear a loud mob chanting. Well, I'm triggered. I go into fear, freak out. I've got to protect my family. We're in Syria. But I'm curious, and I feel really foolish when we go closer and find that it's a promotion for giving chocolate on Mother's Day. <laughs> my curiosity and willingness to challenge my fears means I didn't come back here with a story of escaping something horrible and dreaded Syria. But instead, join the festivities, and I'm hoisted on the shoulders of them. Them, my new friends. We all have a long way to go, including me. But every step forward is significant. Be conscious, be curious, be compassionate, and challenge, challenge, challenge. And remember, there is no them once you know them. Thank you very much.